and it's just going the footage of me is just going, that's why I really hate or something with doing the crossover with Lindsay too, the dancing tree knock something over. Yeah, the, the dan there's a scene when we did uh, whatever the date with the nostalgia chick and the dancing tree actually knocks this glass or face so over. It wasn't yes, it was all. a nightmare because we had a lot of wind and a lot of dogs on the property next door and they kept making noise. Yeah, so there's a lot of little technical things and whatever it happens, yeah, you just work with it, work around it, see if you incorporate it in there. Um, just, you know, do the best you can. Or like, uh... Mostly it's Doug's computer that blows up. That's the biggest thing. Well, it's been with now that and the uh, my voice keeps disappearing. I think it's disappeared like three times now since I started doing this. I've always had to. You really need to do give you an automatic voice modulator like Stephen. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why we did in Alone in the Dark. That's why I do it on the computer because it's just like I don't have a voice, so I just had to. I think there was starting to be a sort of sound like this, so it wouldn't be good. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot of goofballs and stuff. What's that? Uh, well, I'm I asked if he tripped and Yeah, I still got a scar. Actually, if, if, if you get the DVD, you can see how massive his. It, it, it looked like I got it's shot. Like, <laughs> it looks like a bullet. <laughs> yeah, because the guy's path was lined with these really sharp rocks. It was this this uneven terrain to begin with. So it was this dirt path. He protects his lined, nation well. Yeah, and he lined it with all these sharp rocks on either side of the path. And of course, Doug's like, okay, Rob, what I need to do is that uh, we're going to be charging towards you. You're going to be running backwards as fast as you can. Do it, Monkey! Do it! Holding the camera, focusing on my beautiful face the entire time. You know, Doug, I think that's kind of dangerous. Do it! <laughs> so yeah, and I, I cut it on that rock, and the, the doctor afterwards was like, wow, that's like one of the worst injuries I've seen that didn't result in an actual break. Good job. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. If you do it cheap enough, they can make money. That's, it's yeah. the Disney direct to direct to DVD <laughs> Uh No, actually, now here's a, a very true thing about movies, and that's why I try to say that even though there's a lot of me in Nostalgia Critic, it is a character because, in all honesty, it is not easy to make movies. It's not like one guy goes and says, I have a dream, let's just make it happen. No, everybody has to come in on You have to get funding. Everybody wants their thumbprint on They want their remark. They have changes. Nobody's 100% satisfied with the product. They all want to change it. And when you get so many people on there, it can very easily get lost. So uh, that is a good chunk of it. Uh, sometimes you just get a jerk who doesn't know what they're doing. I really think like the one commonality I've noticed among all of them is that if it's a bad movie, really sometimes you can get around certain things. Like if you have a good story and the acting's bad, you can kind of say, well, at least the story was good. Generally, it's just a bad story. If you've written a bad story, or if you're a lousy screenwriter, or if, or what can happen, I've seen this happen a lot, is that you may have had a good script originally, but too many hands in the pot, like studio heads or whatever, too many changes made. If that script gets ruined, or something happens on set where it's just messed around too much, you can't recover from a bad script normally, because if your story's crap and everything, you can have the best actors in the world, but if you have the world's worst story, you're just going to be like, well, what the hell, why'd they do that? Well, make any sense. Well, and I think there is a pattern to good, bad movies that make sense. Like, movies are so bad, they're enjoyable. And usually it's when somebody has, anybody, has a lot of passion about, like, they really, really, and this is, like, their opus or whatever, and it's just misguided. Like, you know, it's in the wrong the area. Room. And those are so mm -hmm. much fun. You know, The Room is so much fun. Dungeons and Dragons is so, if you listen to the commentary on Dungeons and Dragons, I mean, they're just like, oh, man, Marlon Wayans, the comedic genius. He <laughs> just take a seat, just turn it into magic. I have not seen comedy like this since, well, ever. You know, and, 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 and Jeremy Irons, look at him, look at him holding back. 